Hey guys, for today we're going to take a look at the best in slot or the best gear that you can get right now in PS2 New Genesis. It's actually been a while since I did this last, so much so that it isn't just a one build fits all scenario anymore. There's actually different builds for different activities throughout the game that are considered the best. For these, I'll be explaining the weapons, armor, and the augments that you'll be needing for these builds, and how to obtain all those different pieces. But to start us off today, we'll talk about the armor, as there isn't really much of a difference between the builds with them. But the current endgame, it's all about these Octo Armors. There isn't a huge difference between them besides their substats and how you obtain them throughout the game. As with this regular Octo Armor, it has 20 HP and 4.5% potency of all three damage types. And then like these Arga Belta Shezas have 40 HP and 6 Photon Power, so clearly better than that 20 HP. But they only have two of the damage types respectively, so the melee and range for Arga, ranged and tech for the Belta, and melee and tech for the Sheza here. So you're trading off one of the damage types, but if you don't use all three, then it doesn't really matter. But for the VO1, it gives 10 Photon Power in all three of the damage types, so you can pretty much choose that over any of these if you're just going for the Photon Power and don't care about HP at all. So it's pretty much just up to you, like preference-wise, as you know, you might want all three damage types here and some extra HP or the extra Photon Power down below, or you want like a mix of stats, but don't care about having all three damage types with either of these. But for how you obtain them, the easiest one is definitely this regular Octo Armor through the Growth Mint Exchange Shop. So you can get Growth Mint out of Lucille Exploration or even other activities like Limited Time Quests. Now you take this Growth Mint and go to the Item Trader. There's this Growth Mint Exchange right at the bottom. And if you scroll down, then there's Octo Armor right here. And you can even get a Fix of One Guard version guaranteed. You just gotta spend an extra amount of Growth Mint. For the Arga Belta Shezza, this has been interchanged between different limited time quests, so it's pretty much a limited set of armor pieces. But currently, there is a urgent quest that you can do called Haunted Domain for it. Right on the map down below, right in Maquad, that show sometimes shows up, and there's a chance of it dropping in there. You can also buy it in the player market from other people. I've seen it go for like a few mil at this current time, but it might lower even further as more people get them and not want them as much. For the VO, it's similar, except for it's in a permanent urgent quest called Mining Rig Defense Retem. So as the name suggests, it is in the Retem region, but with this, it has to be the rank 3 version. You can also do a trigger quest version of this by getting alliance triggers from the alliance NPC named Tim, and then exchanging alliance badges for this trigger, and then you can just do it anytime that you want and have a chance at getting the VO, but it is another rare armor to obtain. Out of all of these, I think most people will settle with the regular Octo Armors for their personal growth. With this though, it is not tradable, so that means you have to earn it for yourself. And if you invest into this and want to change to a different armor later, you'll not be able to sell it to somebody else to try to make some gains back. That's pretty much it on the armors. There are a couple of other viable options, like a Claire and Ajax. They're just not as good because they have 4% and 3.5% potency. But with these, you might be able to get them as hand-me-downs to the player market or in seasonal shops like the Ajax armor, which have some good pre-upgrades to let you get a lot more with way less um, Maceta investment or material investment. So they're definitely ones to look out for, but if you want to go for the min-max, these are the ones that you want to use. Let's move on, though, to the weapons. So for this, there are quite a few weapons that are very close to each other or are best in certain situations. But right now, let's just take a look at the overall best, and that is the Tassa weapon series. So this applies to all weapon types in the game, but there are three different types of potentials you can see on these weapons, depending on which weapon type it is. Um, we'll talk about that in a second, but for these, they are a rarity nine, weapon and they have an incredibly low drop chance from where they come from they can drop from pretty much all level 70 plus content so like alio combat sectors that are the highest rank the new maquad lower level rank and certain urgent quests can drop them it's just you're not really likely to see one because it's like one in a million one in a billion i don't even know it's like We've only seen a couple dozen in the past few months. Only recently, in like uh, the last week or so, we got an increase to the drop rate with certain content. So for that, there's this Roof McQuad area, this giant mushroom, and there's Dread enemies and Gigantics enemies that can spawn there that are level 84. So for killing those, they actually have a good chance of dropping, uh, well, good chance. It's still pretty rare, but not nearly as rare as it was before. 
So when we may have saw like one or two in the player market, we're now seeing dozens in the player market and it's probably going to keep expanding as this gets more and more farmed right now the lowest one is about 30 mil here on ship three but that's just really dependent on the weapon type as some are more popular than others with the player base but it's definitely better than all of them being at like 100 mil 200 mil before like the update a couple weeks ago so we should see these go even further below hopefully around 20 mil as a price point is that's what it used to be for a rare weapon in the past Let's take a look at these stats, though. For all the Tassas, the attack power goes up to 992 once it's enhanced to plus 70. But like I mentioned before, the potentials differ between the different ones. For the sword and some other weapons, they have the incandescent unit, which goes up to plus 36% potency at level 6. And then you get 15 photon power once you crit. You can do that every 10 seconds. So it's upkeeping your photon power, which is very nice for that one. And then for another potential... We have the receptive unit like on the rod here. This gives a plus 36% potency at level six, so pretty much the same exact thing. But then the sub benefits uh, are completely different. Offensive PP recovery plus 15%, natural PP recovery plus 20% uh, with the speed, and then plus 30% damage resistance. But you get minus 30 photon power when you take damage. So you pretty much want to avoid damage there to not lose the photon power for your PAs. But with this, you take less damage by a pretty good bit, and you're getting more photon power in different ways. I would argue that this potential is better at its job than the previous potential that we saw, but the next one is actually best for damage. This one is the Dance Obscure unit, which can be found in Katana amongst other weapons, and at level six potential, it has 32% potency. It's actually 4% less than the previous two, but it gets a bonus potency of plus 1% every five seconds to a max of 5%. Now we lose that bonus by minus 1% when you take damage. So this gets to 37% potency, so 1% over the others. But that's not exactly how it works because it's a separate instance of potency. And the way that potency works in this game, it's actually multiplicative with each other. So you actually get a little bit more than 37%. To calculate this out, we would take the 32% potency or 1.32 times 1.05 so that's the five percent and that equals 1.386 or 38.6 percent potency so it's actually a little bit more than what it would seem to be so with that said you can definitely see that this has more raw potency over the other two potentials however you might get more benefit out of the regeneration of the photon power depending on your class over this little bit of damage but for these potentials, you're not always just locked into them with a certain weapon type. So like with the rod here, if you're a force class and you want to have the dance obscure unit, you can just get a katana and then multi-weapon a rod into it to then have this potential benefit and being able to use the rod's abilities. That of course isn't always going to be a possibility for people right now because it is still quite rare and expensive in the player market and you might not always have the weapon that you want or need to show up in there. So let's take a look at a couple of other options that are very good for general use and that's Verschmelz and Neos Astrian. So Verschmelz, just like the regular Octo Armor, can be obtained in the Growth Mint Exchange Shop for 50 for a regular version and 300 for a Fixo 1 Termina version. I would highly recommend getting the Termina because that's just always going to occur with this because with its potential, it is 100% crit rate. So it's always going to do critical hits. However, because of that, it gets a penalty of minus 14% uh, potency at level six. This is definitely strange to people as why would you want minus to your damage versus having a massive plus in others? Well, because of the crit rate, you're always getting that crit damage multiplier of 20%. And if you get the fix of Termino 1 version, you're getting extra crit damage all of the time. And even with the add-on skill with crit damage, you're proccing that constantly. So that all combined makes the Vershmels a very good and a consistent weapon. So it doesn't have like the highest damage numbers out there, which are always going to be exactly doing the same damage all the time at a decently high number. Also, because of this, any floor potency is not going to matter because when you crit, you do the top end of your variance at all times. So the 100% here and floor potency just raises the minimum damage you can do, which is not going to, you know, affect the Vershmels in the slightest. So any floor potency from like augments is not going to help or any crit rates from any other sources is not going to help, but it does help other weapons. So do be aware of that. For the Neos Astrian, it is an 8 star instead of a 9 star like these two. 
And because of that, I can't quite keep up with its attack power with the 894 here versus the 992 that these two have. However, there's a much better chance of getting a Fixa to drop with this weapon series, especially in Dark Falls Solus. Because of that, that'll help keep up the DPS versus these two. And with the new Fixa Enhancement System, it's also very easily to enhance the Astrian over these two. Because you can just get the Astrians to drop or you can get them made with the Aegis Integra exchange. And getting Aegis Integra, there's a whole bunch of sources now. But there's a guaranteed one with Geolab Rank 2 doing that for the first time. Or just exchanging for it with a Genesis Point shop. So there's always guaranteed ways to get these to enhance the Fixa. But you can also buy Neos Justitians, which also can help with upgrading the Astrian's Fixa. So many different ways to do that. With its potential, it's also pretty nice. This Flowing Spring unit has a little bit higher potency than most of the Tassau weapons at 38% at level 6. And with its other benefits, it's a little bit different that adds DPS, but not in a direct way. It has Photon Blast Gauge Charge when attacking plus 25%. So you're going to be able to use your Photon Blast more for all the content. And when you do use a Photon Blast, your Photon Power Consumption is reduced by 15% for 90 seconds, allowing you to do more PAs without, without having to get more Photon Power. Also, you can choose between these three for the endgame content to do most of everything. But there are some other weapons that definitely keep up, just not as close. And some are even better in other instances, but they're very specific. We'll take a look at that later with the damage calculation stuff, but let's look at the augments that we'll want to use. For the best augments in the game, almost all of them are crafted within the item lab. And for these, they take other augments as materials, so it can be quite time consuming for the individual ones or quite expensive in the player market. Right now, if you enhance your weapon and armor to at least plus 61, you do get six augment slots for each of them. However, we will look at a little bit more than six because there's more that are viable to use for different situations that we'll take a look at. For the first one, we have the newest, which is the Grand Dreadkeeper. So this is a all-arounder capsule. It has 15 HP, 3 photon power, 2.5% potency, 5% potency floor, and 1% damage resistance. So that's pretty good, except for on Vershmels. You don't really want to use it for that because... All that potency floor is going to go to waste on something like that with 100% crit rate. So you wouldn't really use it for that weapon, but pretty much everything else. But it requires 10 Dreadkeeper 5s and 10 Aresis Fusias. So the Fusias here are from the new Dual Quest Phase 3. They can do at the quest counter. And the Dread 5s come from that Roof Maquad area we talked about from the Dread enemies there. You can also craft the Dread 5s in the same item lab. But it does take quite a bit of resources, 30 of the Dread 4s, which also drop in that area, 30 Photon Quartz, and 30 Hexakite. So that can take quite a bit, just crafting one of these at a time. But going back to everything else, the next thing is High Ret Domino, which is also new. You can get 30 HP, 3% potency, and 2.25% potency floor from this augment. That's pretty good damage-wise, and a little bit of extra HP on top, but it does take... 30 Ret Sovereigns, which is a new capsule as well. It's mainly just used for crafting this, and you can obtain it in the Maquad lower level rank 5, that combat zone, and then that Mining Rig Retem rank 3 that we talked about earlier with that VO armor. You get a guaranteed 1 with Urgent Quest, then you get it to drop sometimes in the Maquad lower level, so it might take a while to get to that 30. And then it takes 150 All No Notes, which is dropped from the All Noth combat zone, at a pretty common drop rate. Same with the Maqua notes, but that is from the Maquad lower level. So you get both the Ret Sovereigns and the Maqua notes from the Maquad lower level area. You have to go out of your way for the All Noth Combat Zone for this one, though. There might be another rank to All Noth in the future, but as of right now, we don't know if that would exist. Um, but yeah, for this, there is an alternative to called High Ale Domina. It has a little bit different stats, like with the HP, and it gives Photon Power, and it has 0.25% less potency floor. So technically it does like less damage or less DPS, uh, but maybe it would take the photon power over that little bit of difference with the potency floor. Uh, but yeah, it takes 30 Ale Sovereigns, which is just like the Red Sovereigns. You need to go to the combat zones in Alio to obtain this. And then you need to go to each combat zone for like Mount Magnus for these notes, Banford Labs for these ones, and Wrestle Forest for those here. Next, we have Gladius Soul. This is 20 HP, 6 Photon Power, and 3.75% potency, so that's very nice. 
but it requires 10 Starless Souls, which are gotten from Starless enemies at an uncommon drop rate. You need to get 10 Dula Fusias, which come from the Dual Quest Phase 2, and then 30 Erati Soul 4s. This is gotten from Dark Falls Interception at a higher rank, which gives three every time, just like the Aegis Soul 4s. So it might take you quite a while to get the Erati Soul, but everything else should be at a faster pace. Then we have a simple capsule here, the Gigas Mass Stay. It gives 20 HP and 3.5% potency, just mainly the potency here that we're caring about. And then it requires 10 Formido Fusias, which are gotten from Dual Quest Phase 1. So a lot of these take doing the Dual Quests in each of the different phases to make them. But then it takes 10 of each of the Gigas 4 capsules, the Might, Precision, and Technique. For these, they used to be harder to obtain, but now they're pretty easy with that Roof McQuad area we keep talking about. So the Recon Gigants and the Gigantics there can drop them at a good rate. So you can kind of double dip with getting those and the Dread Fives. We can also exchange for them with the Giga Strugments you'll also be getting and going to a, the same spot as that Growthman Exchange to get some of these every week. And then you can also craft Gigas Fours now, just like the Dread Fives, using some previous augments as well as resources. Next, we have the set of tripables, the triple two and the fuse tripables. You essentially just use one of these depending on your preferences. The triple two is the easiest one to make, but the most simple. It just gives 3% potency and it requires one of those dual quest fusions, the dual phase one, five of each of the doables, which are just gotten through a whole bunch of different ways now. If you want a specific spot, there's the Infernium Exchange at the Item Trader, so you can get some of those, and just like other ways that will just happen automatically. Uh, for the Tripable, the Stamina one, it gives 15 HP. The Spirit gives five Photon Power. The Death is a little bit different. It has less potency, but it gives potency floor, 2.5%. And then Gua Tripable, 3% potency and 3% damage resistance. So people usually prefer to use the Spirit or Guard, but for all these, they take three Formido Fusions instead of the one here. And they each take specific stat capsules that have like the Spirit Might, Spirit Precision, Spirit Technique for the Spirit Trippable. Then the Stamina one takes the Stamina, Might, Precision Technique, and so on and so forth for the others. And those are just gotten from Megalotics now. It used to be a pain before. But yeah, just killing Megalotics in combat zones are going to net you a ton of these. You don't have to really worry about it. Then we have the Half Finale. This is the best augment that you can craft in the game right now. And it gives 4% potency, 15 HP, and 5 Photon Power. So nice little package. And it takes 30 Aegis Soul 4s. So that's gotten through doing the Battle of Halfia Lake quest or the Dark Falls Aegis quest. You get 3 guaranteed every single time. And then 10 of each of the Dominas. This is mainly gotten from Lasile Exploration now, but you can also get it from Geolab Rank 2. And through some other sources, you can craft them, but mainly get them from Lasile Exploration. That is your best bet when double dipping or triple dipping with everything else that you get in there. That covers six of the categories for the six slots of augments that you'll need. But there's a few more that I want to mention before we move on into the calculations. There's a Mastery 4, which is also pretty good that you can use. Uh, you can get this straight up from captains very rarely. Uh, these are the little ball guys in the trials from combat zones or exploration sectors, but more often than not, you'll get mastery threes from them. And you can use these mastery threes, uh, 10 of them, and 20 photon quartz and 20 tetracite to make these as well. This gives 2.5% potency, 2.5% floor, and 2.5% damage resistance. So this is just like a better death trippable, or you know, if you want to be a little bit tankier, but a little bit less damage in comparison to the other things. So that's like an option for you. There's also the stat fours, might four, precision four, and technique four. These are just a 3% potency augment. And they're gotten pretty easily, but they only cover one uh potency type so you won't be able to use it for all sets of gear unlike the others which are just generic potency but this is like a filler augment if you want to use it but the last augment or category of augments that i want to talk about are pay to win ones through and through and they are xd augments so there's a whole variety of them that can be obtained through ac support scratches that sometimes show up or by the player market by buying it off of other players that do scratch uh, through that. So an example here is an XD style Meltech. It has 20 HP, 4% melee and tech potency, and 1.5% potency floor. 
So all of these XDs are going to have 4% potency. Some of them are hybrid and others are all three potency types, the parfait versions. And then all of them are going to have potency floor of some amount, at least 1.5%. But it really just depends uh, with the substats. So there can be damage resistance ones, photon power ones, a whole bunch. Let's just look at the website here. So there's deft ones, which just add more floor, 3% instead of 1.5, but no additional stats. There's the guard. Yeah, this is the damage resistance one. The spirit one. A whole bunch of different stuff. Usually the cheaper uh, ones here are the wards with hybrids because it's all down resistance. And that's just for resisting the elemental effects, which don't really matter in the game. So you might find those to be the cheapest out of the bunch. Um, but yeah, the parfait versions are usually the most expensive, especially like the guard and the deft because the damage resistance is pretty powerful for you know, resisting damage, not getting hurt as much. And then the depth is just the most damaging out of any of them. Unfortunately, for best in slots, you will need these to do the max amount of damage within the game. But you are more than welcome to not use these as it's definitely not needed for any of the content within the game. Um, there's also other versions of augments that we talked about called LC augments. These are just a little bit less potency by 0.25%. For Gigas Maste, Gladius Soul, Half Finale, High L Domina, and the Mastery LC. These, uh, for the most part, are pretty good to use, especially these first three if you don't have the original versions, and they are gotten through the Lucille Exploration. But yeah, we won't really be looking at these because they are not best in slot, of course. There are also S type augments, which are just like XDs with 100% success rate or guaranteed to be put onto the slots in your gear. Uh, these are just pre existing capsules, though, of what you know can be earned in game. Um, for some of these, they can be gotten through Treasure Shop, uh, like the LC Augs that we just saw. There's also the Mastery 4, which can be gotten through an SG Support item select, which has happened once so far, so I'm not sure how often that's supposed to come and go. Uh, they also can be gotten through packs that you spend AC or SG on. Um, there's also Gladius Soul and... IL Domina, like this here, and they're the full versions of them with the SG support item select. There's also Gigas Mass Day. So a whole bunch of the good augments, and you're pretty much just like skipping all of that work and instead spending star gems. It's definitely iffy on if that's a good implementation for the game or not, but it does exist for you to obtain these augments. That is all of the gear though out of the way. Let's actually look at the calculations now to reaffirm what I am saying and kind of compare it to some things that we didn't talk about. Yeah, for this damage calculator, this is made by Cakewalk, which is a, you know, a player within the community. And they made this lovely damage calculator a while back and keep updating it from time to time when it needs to be updated, like with new augments and new weapons and such. Uh, with this, there's a whole bunch of different numbers to look at. The main things are like the Slayer buffs, which we don't have active yet which give more critical rate within the Slayer class for both subclass and main class. We'll talk about those later. Then the add-on skills, I'm going to have all of those at 20 for min-maxing purposes, best in slot. Um, but typically, you probably want to have all these at 20, but just keep that in mind there. Um, then there's also the level of the enemies. We'll change that because that will matter. But right now, it's level 80. And then on bossing, so for bosses only, not just you know mobs or whatever. Then up above, we have different builds for certain weapon series that we'll talk about. Over here, though, we have our baseline. So Tessa Incandescent with these augments, Gladius Soul, Hal Finale, Gigas Maste, Hyra Domina, XD Def Parfait, and Grand Dreadkeeper. Then we have the three Octo Armors with the same exact augment lineup. One thing I want to address first is this Grand Dreadkeeper. There's a lot of people that think having just higher potency in general is the best way to go. However, because of how much potency floor is on this and it does have 2.5% potency, it's actually better than a 3% potency capsule that is just that. As we can see up above, I have this little setup or it takes the four Grand Jed Keeper and would switch it to a trippable, for instance, that has a 3% potency. And as we can see right here, that's a negative DPS. So it would be minus 3% if we switched over from the Grand Dread Keeper to the trippable with the Tassa weapon series. Another way that I set this up is by having a completely different sheet with the trippables in the baseline. And if we take a look at the Tassa incandescent here at no fixa, it has a 4780.92 for its average DPS. Uh, 
but with the Grand Dreadkeeper inside on the original sheet, it has a 4932.98. So as you can see there, it's a considerable difference in DPS. You definitely want to use a Grand Dreadkeeper for at least that weapon and many more. For Slayer mains, this is also the case that you would use Grand Dredge over Trippable, even though that crit rate lessens the value of floor potency, essentially. As we can see here, if I switch to Slayer with effective DPS, it goes from negative 3 to negative 1.4. So it isn't as much of a difference between the two anymore, but it is still better to use the Grand Dreads over the Trippable. Even in a special case, you would do this with a downed enemy getting the crit rate from the add-on skill, the Slayer one as it's still just a little bit better with a negative 0.48 there. Even if you somehow had an average focus of five at all times and having the rage constantly going, it's still a tad bit better. So you'd always want to use the Grand Dread in pretty much any case. The only time you wouldn't do so is with the Vershmel's weapon, which has 100% crit rate. That's why I didn't put it in this lineup and instead just have a triple two in its place. But yeah, let's take a look at the comparisons of everything here with the Tassa baseline. So as we can see, the biggest difference is the seasonal weapon here. So the reason why the seasonal Bronaga plus 70 is so much higher than the Tassa is because it has that seasonal augment that only applies to the seasonal enemies of the time, which is very powerful. It gives 20% potency as well as 35% crit rate. So that just makes this insanely powerful even if i took all of the other augments off of this i deleted here and just have the seasonal augment it would still be like almost as powerful as the tassa it would just be like a little bit off i could just get like a fixa and it would be powerful than a no fixa tassa let's undo that though yeah for seasonal enemies whenever that occurs like a seasonal event happens and a weapon like this comes out you definitely want to use that weapon if you're trying to farm some seasonal enemies in like a combat zone or with the LTQ, wherever they are at. You definitely want to use that 100%, even if you just have crap augments on it or whatever augments come with it. After that seasonal event is done, though, once it says an augment becomes useless, you definitely don't want to like hold on to the Bronaga. Even if it's upgraded the exact same as the Tassa with the best in slots, it's a minus 11% difference in dps from it with a no fixa to a no fixa or even at its best it's minus six percent at a fix of five fatal you definitely don't want to just use this and would rather use something else for other off the wall uh positive green numbers here we have revita dark and neo society and light so when you use these weapons against their specific elemental weakness like revita's with dark and justine with light then you get a pretty big positive that actually makes it so at high fixa levels, like fixa attack 5 and fatal 5, they actually surpass the Tassa Incandescent at a no fixa. So you can use them for like Dark Falls Solace with the Neo Sustain Light here, or with the Revita Dark, you would use it against um, some Starless enemies. Of course, this isn't a fair comparison because these are in their niche, while Tassa is just this good all the time. So typically, you wouldn't upgrade these two weapons as hard as you would a Tassa. But speaking of weapons that you would upgrade as hard, like for Schmelz here, for instance, which is another nine star weapon, uh, for a no fix, uh, it isn't very good. That's why I recommended the Termina 1 guarantee which is at minus 5.8% difference between the two weapons. This is honestly the best you're going to get with a guarantee. You can get several Termina 1s to try to make a Termina 2, but with the fixed enhancement system in the item lab, it's just a 10% chance by default. So you may need to rely on the fixed enhancement boosters from that SG support scratch that I talked about uh, before, but that's just limited time and who knows when that's going to come back. Uh, yeah, I've seen some people with Termina 2s, that's pretty common actually for those that try, but Termina 3 uh, is pretty rare because you need a couple of 2s to try to get a 3, which you know requires several 1s to get several 2s, so that's a possibility which is pretty close to a no fix it to saw. But yeah, Termina 4 might be out of the question unless you use like crazy boosters for it, which I wouldn't really recommend at this point. For the other weapon, the Astrian that we talked about, this at no fixa is minus 6.82% in comparison to a no fixa Tassa. So a little bit worse than a Termina 1 Vershmels. But as you start getting fixes for the Astrian, which can be common and very likely through the fixa enhancement system, 
you can get better and better up to a negative 1.46% chance with a Fatal 5. So if you manage to get one of those, you're pretty well off and almost have a near no fixa to saw. One other weapon that I wanted to mention is actually a five star weapon, and that is the Griaga series. So against bosses, it gets extra potency. And because of that, it actually keeps up with the Tassa series against bosses. So at a fixa attack five, it's actually a minus 0.52% difference to a no fixa Tassa, which is pretty darn close for a five star series. But that's not even at its best because this is taking this build here, which is for Schmelz and one to six star rarity. So let's actually change the triple two to a grand red, which the Griaga will actually like more. So we'll do that. And as you can see here, it's actually slightly better than a Tassa no Fixa, pretty much on par with it. So if you're doing just bosses, you may want to do a Griaga instead of a Tassa. But once again, it is in a niche instead of just against all content. Let's actually undo that now and take a look at how Slayer influences all of this. So first, we'll take a look at the Slayer sub, and this will give us all that critical hit rate from its skill tree. As you can see, it influences it by some. Uh, a lot of these get actually worse comparison to Tassa, except for on the Termina side of things. So sometimes, like with the Ravita Dark, it gets more benefit there, and it's get it's pretty close to a no fixa there. Uh, same with just a TN light in the Termina sides. It actually gets positive with the Termina 5. Um, but for the most part, things stay the same, except for Vershmel's gets worse in this scenario because it doesn't benefit from the extra crit rate that Slayer gives. For Slayer's a main, pretty much the same thing can be said, where all the things on the Termina side get a little bit better and get closer to Tassa but everything else gets kind of worse, like the fixed attack and fatal, and Vershmel's gets really bad since it's not getting any of that benefit, which is even more crit rate with Slayer main, and you're almost better off just using any other weapon, even at a no fixa, versus a Termina 1 Vershmel's here. Because minus 14% versus minus 10 with a Trunkle, minus 11 with a Rugged Pursuit, minus 13.69 with a Setchel, even against bosses. Yeah, it's just particularly bad for Vershmel's with a Slayer main. Reverting back to non-Slayer, let's actually take a look at the difference with the enemy levels and how it affects the DPS. So at level 80 to 75, you won't see any change because there's no change in the enemy's defense between those levels. So there's nothing there. But once we go to level 74, it will actually change things in favor of the previous rarity's weapons. That's because they're not penalized as hard by the enemy's defense anymore. So you might see some things actually poke through with the green, like the Griaga bossing at Fixa Attack 5 versus the Tassa uh, no Fixa. If we uncheck this box for bossing, switching it to mobbing or just regular mobs, then the Sechidal weapon, which is great at killing mobs because it gets extra potency, actually pokes through with Fixa Attack 4 and 5 against the Tassa too. So if we keep pushing that to like level 70 for the high rank Alio combat sectors, Almost all of the fixes are going to be great with the Sechidal weapon. So if you consider actually upgrading it this high versus a Tassa, you actually will do better in those areas. This just keeps getting better and better as we lower the level. So if we go to like 60, then almost all the weapons in the game are going to be better than a Tassa, believe it or not. So if you ever plan on going back to some of the content, I would highly recommend upgrading a Sechidal for these different things because... It gives like so much percentage for mobbing in those combat zones, which are the main thing to go back for. Using a Griaga for bosses can also help if you are for some reason doing bosses like in lower level purple triggers or something like that. Um, but for a generic one that doesn't require upgrading two different kinds of weapons, an evil orbit is actually pretty powerful uh, in comparison, only a 3% difference between the two of Sechidal and Griaga, but it's good for all content. If you use Slayer, this is pretty much the same concept, but instead of like Fixa Attack being one of the best ones to use for these weapons, it's Fixa Termina that's going to turn out to be better for you. That's mainly it for this sheet, but this other one that I have is specifically for dual quests. With the augments, you're going to be using completely different ones called Defi Augments. These can be found through various means, but mainly in like limited time activities during certain times, like seasonal events and also in the Giga Strugna Exchange for Phase 1 and 2. Phase 3 is currently just in the seasonal event we have going on right now with Halloween, but I imagine that will be in the Giga Strugna Exchange later. But there's Defi, Eris, Plutos, Ceres, Makamis, Homius, 
and sadness. There'll be phase one through three versions of these that only apply to their specific quests. So the phase one won't help with phase two and won't help with phase three and so on and so forth. And it'll only help if you use a main class weapon. So if you're playing at force and have a dagger because you have fighter as your subclass, you're not going to get the benefits from these augments. Now you'll pretty much have all of these filled into your slots. There is no phase one capsule of the suddenness. That's the only exception. But pretty much you'll equip all of these, which have a ton of potency, 7% for all of them, and then some weird uh, sub effects like 20% floor for one, 5% crit rate, some ridiculous bonuses. But yeah, if you have all those on, there's certain weapons that you do want to use for the dual quests. For dual quest phase three, which is a level 80 boss that is weak to dark, you'd want to use the Ravita weapon series at a high fixa, like fixa attack five or fixa termina five. Uh, the problem with that, though, is Ravita is no longer available. It was a limited time weapon, so you only find a select few in the shop that might even be that high for a fixa, if at all. So if you can't find one, probably the next best thing, because you really don't want to use it to saw for this, most likely, uh, is actually a Christia weapon. If you have a high fixa with that, it's only like a minus 3% or 4% difference. Just depends on what fixa you have in comparison to a to saw itself. For Dual Quest Phase 2, it's the same exact recommendations as we saw earlier between 80 to 75 for the enemy level. There's no difference in defense. And with the Phase 2 boss, it is weak to dark as well. So still Ravita is one of the better weapons to choose. Uh, Christia is a good choice. And then Neos Astrian is also good, but you can't sell it to anybody else if you want to get rid of the weapon in any time in the future. But it's pretty much like up to you. For Dual Quest Phase 1, it actually has four different quests in that phase. So four different bosses. And none of them are weak to the dark element. So I wouldn't really recommend Ravita for that. But instead, I would just go back to the Christia here. Maybe even the Griaga is like a good option too. It's sort of similar. Uh, as well as Neos Astrian. Just any of the other choices that I mentioned with the previous two phases. That is all the best builds that I have for you guys today. If I was to make the ultimate build for the end game content around level 80 right now, I would take a Tassa Flexel or the Dance Obscura potential with a Fatal 5 with all of the Octo Armors, probably the Vos with any kind of fixer that would pertain to my class, most likely Performa 5. And then with the augments that I said earlier, Gladius Soul, Half Finale, Gigas Maste, High Red Domina, XD Death Parfait, and Grand Dreadkeeper. If I was playing Slayer, I wouldn't change much. The only thing that I would take is a Termina 5 of the same exact weapon over a Fatal 5. That's everything that I have for you guys today, though. I'll see you in the next NGS video. Peace.